Psychotropic drugs have long been noted for having a multitude of physical and emotional side effects that many simply cannot live with. But if side effects from psychotropics are so bad, why do some people continue to take them? Psychiatrists, drug companies, and even government agencies are entrusted with the safety of the drugs they put on the marketplace. And while they will reluctantly admit to most side effects of psychotropics, there is one more that they almost never mention. Every single one of these drugs are addictive, psychologically and or physically addictive. They change your body's uh, makeup. You change your body how it reacts to things. And so even though people in their psychological state, they may be over their depression, they physically will need that drug still. And so that becomes the complication of getting them off. But listen to what some psychiatrists questioned at a recent APA conference had to say about addiction. How addictive are psychiatric drugs? They aren't only benzodiazepines. They're not addictive at all. This conflict on addiction all comes down to a definition of words. Most people think of addiction as an uncontrollable psychological or physical need for a certain substance. But not psychiatrists. They define addiction as the craving of a higher and higher dose of the same drug, while the uncontrollable need to keep taking a drug is categorized only as dependence. This is why psychiatrists will not admit that their drugs are addictive. In their definition, a very small percentage of people become addicted. The reality is a large percentage of people can't get off these drugs, and they call that dependence. It's all a matter of how they term it. And when you look at addiction, it could be that their tolerance increases and their uh, needs and wants to use the medications increase, or it could be they simply, once they start on the medication, they're not able to come off of it. Once they start on the medication, they're not able to come off of it. Once, once they, they start, start on the medication, medication they're, they're not, not able, able to come off of it. Once, once they, they start, start on the medication, medication they're, they're not, not able, able to come, come off of it without help. They try to, and as soon as they try to come off the medications, they start to have symptoms that are unwanted and obviously keep them wanting to take the medications again. When you explain to them how addictive it is, they are surprised because they're like, well, it's a prescription. So I do believe that a lot of people don't really know how uh, harmful these meds are. They don't view them as, um, as dangerous as some of the street drugs. But many psychotropics have become street drugs, especially the class of drugs given to children diagnosed as having inattention or hyperactivity. Stimulants such as Ritalin, Adderall, and Concerta are so habit-forming that they are listed by the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration as Schedule II drugs, highly addictive substances on the same list as morphine and cocaine. Biochemistry and pharmacology of Ritalin is exactly the same as that of cocaine, except for the speed of onset. Stimulants aren't the only psychotropic drugs carrying a high potential for addiction. Benzodiazepines, for example, are tranquilizers that can become addictive within 14 days. Take, for example, the benzodiazepine Xanax, which after only five years on the market was producing 1.5 million addicts every year. And getting off can be very difficult. Symptoms of Xanax withdrawal include shakiness, loss of appetite, muscle cramps, memory and concentration problems, insomnia, agitation, panic, and anxiety. Some of the psych medicines, particularly the benzodiazepines, are some of the most addictive drugs there are in terms of the persistent withdrawal anxiety that these drugs cause. I have been in the position of having to withdraw a number of people from benzodiazepines that I didn't put on them, obviously. And it's difficult. It's really difficult. Prescription benzodiazepines, I think, are much more dangerous and much harder to come off of for the patient than the street drugs are. But survivors will tell you that benzodiazepines are not the only class of psychotropic drug that is extremely hard to withdraw from. I had about a 10 year time frame in my life where I abused both street drugs and prescription drugs. 
And the drugs that were the hardest to come off of, in my opinion, were the psychiatric medications. And I, I mean worse to come off of than, than a drug like heroin. Withdrawal symptoms from the psychiatric drugs just made my mind go crazy. I couldn't think. I couldn't form coherent thoughts whatsoever. I was racing. I had highs and lows, ups and downs, hot and cold sweats. I went through seizures. I, I, I was sweating with night sweats so bad I was, I was wetting my bed just with sweat. I had tremors really bad. I mean, I joked that I looked like I had the end stages of Parkinson's disease, but you couldn't even hold me still when I was going through withdrawals. My legs would shake. I couldn't sleep. No one in the world should have to go through what I went through, in my opinion, and I wouldn't wish it on I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Even newborns born to women taking psychotropics while pregnant can undergo withdrawal. These infants could experience irritability, hyperactivity, abnormal sleep patterns, vomiting, diarrhea, and failure to gain weight. But it is the amplification of certain side effects caused by withdrawal from psychotropics that can have a disastrous effect on the individual. Now the person stops taking the drug and the effects of the withdrawal or the effects of stop taking the drug are increased and amplified symptoms like the depression or suicide ideas or etc. They have tremendous mood swings. They even get, they invariably get violent. They cannot control their emotions. You're very depressed, you're suicidal, you're hallucinating, you're psychotic, you're crazy, any, or you know, you're manic when you stop taking your medication. This is why improper withdrawal from SSRI antidepressants in particular has been shown to trigger mood swings and uncontrollable anger, which have been implicated in many recent killing sprees. The customary response of psychiatrists is to blame the lack of the drug for what they claim is the return of the mental illness. When a psychiatrist says that, well, the reason why they're feeling that way when they get off the drug is because, see, that shows you how bad they really need the drug. Here's the deal. There's no way that that's true. The reality is when they stop the drug, they get depressed or they get, have withdrawal effects of uh, various types. And the reason they're, they're having those effects is because it's, it's a withdrawal effect from the drug. All you need to do is you need to sit down and listen to anyone who's been on these medications and wants to come off them. And you listen to their story and you listen to what they're going through, why they want to come off them. And that's it. The conversation stops. The debate ends. My name is Robin, and currently I am withdrawing from lorazepam, and I am at the point four milligram dose. There we go. Today, I uh, was totally exhausted. I've had four nights, two and that two nights of insomnia, and then a good night's sleep, then two nights of insomnia. I was just hoping that I can sleep better. Tonight, didn't sleep good last night. Well, as you can see, today I don't care. I did not get ready, and my wave went down. <laughs> I'm down in the valley today. One of the side effects or withdrawal symptoms for lorazepam can be night sweats or hot flashes, a little lightheaded and kind of dizzy, anxiety, sore throat, weepy, very, very tired, grouchy, just overwhelmed, distraught, distressed. I began to experience suicidal thoughts. I've never, I think I've said a little bit to my husband, but he was already worried enough. This is really the first time I'm saying something about it. I feel like I could have a nervous breakdown. You know, there are just times like I hit a brick wall and I just, I can't anymore. It's going to take another, what, maybe 18, 19, 20 weeks to get off of it. And that is very overwhelming to me. I'm weary today.
And that's the hardest thing is you are trapped into living it out the way you have to live it out in order to be safe. So that's, that's frustrating. I just want my life back. And that's where I am today. It took months for Robin to wean herself off just one of her psychiatric drugs. And addiction specialists agree that slowly withdrawing is the only safe way. You just can't cut people off from these drugs. Sometimes it can take up to a year or more, depending on the person and how long they've been on the drug and how we wean them off. You can't stop these drugs cold turkey. No. I, I would never advise anybody to just stop them. They need to be under the care of a medical practitioner. When some of my patients come in and they talk to me about getting off of the psychiatric medications, I really caution them. Uh, not to just stop their drugs cold turkey because that can really send them into a tailspin. The data is right there. It's going to cause the symptoms that it causes. It's going to have withdrawal effects, and they know it. There's not a psychiatrist that doesn't know it. And yet psychiatrists tell us that psychotropic drugs are the only way to keep people from insanity and alleviate mental distress. But is this really the case?